and and at the time I was very you know finicky about budgets you mm. know so I'm like okay cool I'll go there get a jacket for 50 rand I'll wear it take it to a tailor recondition it mm. dry clean Good afternoon and welcome to Changing the Narrative with Rifilo Matlopo. I'm very excited this afternoon because we have the young, the charismatic and the vibrant, our QA corner of suitability. Our QA, who are you not to be? Welcome to Changing the Narrative. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, today there's so much to talk about because... Um, Thinking about your story, I get to, I'm going to say this again, you know, when uh, Grace locates you, it breaks protocol. But above everything, um, you realize your dream, you knew that your dream was, was not too far-fetched. Yeah. Um, before everything else, please tell us a bit about yourself, before we get into the matters, because it, it, it's, it's really hot, it's going to be very hot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, like you said, I'm our Kiwa Kona and I'm 29 and uh, wow. yeah, I usually like to avoid talking about myself, right? Um, giving a description of what I believe um, to be myself, but I think what defines me at the current pre at the present moment is being a husband, right? Recently got married. Beautiful. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that's that's pretty much uh, everything about myself. Mm. I was born in the Eastern Cape and grew up um, around, uh, I grew up in Bumalanga, Gauteng, other areas as well, you know, matriculated in Soweto, mm. studied actuarial science, joined corporate, we're here today. <laughs> what are we doing here today? <laughs> Okay, so maybe let me tell you about myself, right? Mm. So growing up, I was always one of those um, nerds, right, so oh. as to speak, and I liked engineering quite a bit. Got to a point whereby when I was in grade 10 or so, I got to realize that, you know, actually I love looking good, right? Mm. That's where the... And you are looking good, hey? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's where the ideas about suits came to play. So pretty much what would happen was there was a point in time where we had to decide on careers. Mm. I had a few options that included um, aeronautical engineering and actuarial science, accounting all the big science. Stuff. All the big stuff. <laughs> all the exciting stuff, <laughs> um, you know. Mm. And every time I would speak to people, people would tell me engineers you'd have to wear your work suit and, you know, get into get your hands dirty and all that. But I really wanted to look good going to work. Mm -hmm. So to be quite frank and honest, at the time, I decided to take on the actuarial science career because it would make me wear a suit. Wow. Okay. No. You, you really have passion for suits. I love suits. Um, the, is that the reason behind the name suitability? So I'll tell you a few things about the name suitability. Mm. I was still saying, went to study, um, so I matriculated in 20, 2011, mm. um, and by the grace of God, the grace that you mentioned a few moments ago, um, I came out second in Gauteng, mm. right? Um, so the metric... I did not even know about that. Oh, serious? So <laughs> you're big, you're quite big. I don't know why do you even, <laughs> why do you even underrate yourself? No, really? I don't like talking about those, those things, but yeah, so I came second and in Gauteng, got funded by the Premier to study actuarial science. Wow. So I went to WITS. Um, after studying at WITS, then uh, joined the graduate program, one of the big four banks. Mm. And then um, they, so there's, there are subjects in actuarial science that board exams that you write after, um, after school. So what happened was uh, literally I was studying mm. for an exam. Wow. And I came across the word suitability. So it was... It was something called the Black Scholes model, so, and, and the statement was, the suitability of the model is tested wow. by this. <laughs> that name is. Yeah. But, but I think, you know, it's quite beautiful how when we have dreams, you know, there'll be a moment whereby somehow um, there's just this divine intervention that leads you to, to the purpose of your dream. 
And I think it wasn't by coincidence that you, you found the name suitability. Yeah. And I mean, it is what it is. Um, I think I love this beautiful piece right here. And Thank you. it's, sure, it's breathtaking. And I mean, even yourself, Utlukotini, <laughs> literally. <laughs> uh, I think it's quite amazing as to how the universe knows how to link events that leads us to finding our purpose and actually making our and realizing our dream. True. So, oh, there's a lot to talk about, but let me start here. Yeah. So you left your job in corporate. Yeah. Ready to get the balls because. <laughs> It had to take literally that. You had to have the balls yeah. to leave your job because it could mean anything. Yeah. So I'll take you a few years back. So 2016, the while I was studying for that exam I, I, I told you about, mm. um, that's where the idea sparked, right? Actually, it was sparked by my then girlfriend, who's now my wife today. Ah, oh, that's um, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So I used to go to a place called Watunusa. I'm very... Um, how can I put it? I'm the one really downtown, in, in downtown, downtown Joburg. Joburg. I think. I um, not. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I used I think, to frequent that place. That's, quite that's, quite that's a, a place to be if you into fashion, if you love um, creativity, exactly. especially into um, what you wear. Yes, you know? yes, yes. And and at the time, I was very, you know, finicky about budgets. You mm. know, so I'd be like, okay, cool. I'll go there, get a jacket for fifty rand. I'd wear it, take it to a tailor, recondition it, mm. dry clean, retail it fit the size, and then that's how my girlfriend's like, no, but everyone compliments your style because it was vintage, a lot of and it was unique. touch, you know, it's unique, and mm. you, there's nowhere you can just find a tweed blazer in a shop in Johannesburg mm. because it's not really um, the style that is predominant in South Africa, you know, mm. so it's like, wow, okay, this is nice, and as time went by, the brand grew fine. We moved from what to Nusa because the business model wasn't working. And today we custom make our own stuff right wow. from scratch. Shoes, we make shoes from scratch. Um, so that's where the brand Can got. I disturb you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much would your shoe cost? I, I, I've got a reason why I'm asking this. <laughs> okay. So today, uh, our shoes cost 9500 for the custom made ones. If you were to look back um, 10 years ago, would you buy a shoe? Would you believe that you can afford to buy a shoe worth that much? Or would you even see you buy yourself buying a shoe that, of that, that much amount? It would have been a wild imagination mm. to believe that I could buy a shoe of that uh, at that cost. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm probably thinking you're wearing one or even more. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them. They actually come engraved. Um, it's just a pity that our camera won't be able to see the, wow. the, the initials. Oh, and, and yeah. I think I, I appreciate how proud you are of your, of your craft, you know. I mean, this is what you live. This is what you breathe. So, um, from some, for someone who had the guts, who had the bravery to live his job, in, in the corporate and actually said, I'm starting this. What are the voices? Because whenever we want to do something, there are voices True. alongside of us. What yeah. were the voices? What were they saying when you decided that? And even your wife, what did she have to say about it? Because I believe that she's the one who encouraged you to do this. So what were the voices? Because we have two sides of the story, the positive side and the negative side. So I just want to hear your story about the voices. So I've, I've heard voices a lot of voices mm. in all the decisions that I've had to make in my life, I've mm. had voices. So the voices that I had was firstly from my own manager, mm. you know, who gave me an extra week to go and reevaluate my decisions. So it was one of those things. It 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 just doesn't make sense mm. to leave a, a well paying job to venture into the unknown. Especially during a pandemic where you know anything can hit any time mm. and then your business is out. I mean, mm. suits are not, I always say suits are luxury and mm. luxury is not necessary. No, what we do, this is not necessary. People can live without it. Mm. It's a feeling, it's an emotion. That's what we're selling. Mm. So voices, I've had uh, voices when I decided to study actuarial science. Mm. Failure rate more than 60%. Mm. Um, people losing their minds after studying actuarial science. So I've always had voices, but it, it's, it's something, you know. And then 
when grace locates you. And it breaks protocol. Yeah. So. Mm, mm. Sure. I, I think this is amazingly beautiful for the fact that, you know, you just woke up and said, look, I'm, I'm going to leave this job that I'm doing because I want to do something that I love. Because once you do something, giving it your all, then everything else becomes beautiful that emanates from that. Yeah. Simply because, you know, you do it with love. You do it with utmost care. And what you want to do is that you want to show the world that you can stand out there and do it. And you did it. How does it feel? So it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, I'll just, you know, I like backtracking. I like giving context to, to my story. Mm -hmm. So I started this business in 2016. I was on the graduate program, mm -hmm. right? The business grew um, slowly. Mm -hmm. as, so, and we got to a point whereby we are selling suits and I've had to employ people mm -hmm. to come and work for me. And I am at work. Mm. and things are happening at the studio. When I come to, let's say, after work, I see, ah, oh, man, I don't like how this bow tie is sitting. Mm. And sales are affected by that. I'm not there, you know? And as time went by, I got to a point whereby, like, you know what? Um, we are at the point whereby God is giving me a choice, right? Mm. And I won't lie and say I left corporate because it was still chilled, right? No. Things got very difficult. Mm. So I'll need to be in Durban with uh, consulting in Durban. Wow. And I have to be on a call with my boss, mm. right, for whatever, you know. And I'm driving to Durban because flying sometimes is <laughs> sucks. <laughs> so, yeah, and people can hear them in trucks because you just park on the side of the road and mm. you, like, you log in and you have mm. to point because you have to work all at night. But in the background day. Yeah, it's like, hey, what's up, man? You know, and it was like one of those things. And I was like, okay, you know what, man? I think we've gotten to that point of this is the time. It's now mm. or never. Mm. You know? And mm. that's the feeling that you get. And it felt like someone took a big load of dondons on my back and just put it on the side. side. And that was God. It was God. Sure. Yeah. That is very amazing. We've been talking suit, suit, suits. And there's this big thing that's happening around you. Suitability gardens. Tell us about that beautiful craft. Because oh of course, yeah, I went there in twenty nineteen and what it is today. That's amazing. Like I cannot believe myself that it's the same place that I thought was beautiful then. <laughs> I've got something different to say now. It's yo, sure, it's absolutely amazing. Tell us why that, I mean, you could have done anything around suits, around fashion, yeah. but why that specifically? Okay, so context again. Mm. Growing up, I've always liked being different. Yes. I used to wear formal pants to school and put cufflinks on my shirts mm. in high school. Wow. Where everyone was wearing boma, you know, my parabella, man, those dickies <laughs> pants, a and, a <laughs> and all that, and you know, Mm. And everyone would just walk around and wear their hair to look. But I, I used to like being a gentleman. Mm. That extends also to like being different. Mm. So I'm, liking finer things because you've got that taste oh, for finer yes, things. Oh finer things in life. Was, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> when it came to a venue, mm. I decided first of all, I am an actuarial specialist, mm. and I design suits. That's a very rare combination. It is. Because it's a blessing, actually. Mm. Uh, being an actuarial specialist means that you are more analytical. You are mm. the, those type of people. You, your fashion sense is known to be dull. Mm. You know? And then dull. you come to and you design and so I'm like, okay, but that's not enough, right? Wow. Um, there are designers who can, they are fashion, actuarial science people who will come to you and say, I want to design a suit, and then maybe they make it in life. I want to mm. be different. I want to be further different. I would like to own a wedding venue yeah. so that we'll be the only suit designers in the industry that own a wedding venue. Wow. It hasn't been done in South Africa. We are the sure. first. Yo, because yeah, oh, this is beautiful. I don't know what to say, but... You know, I always say that as a black child, your dreams are not too far-fetched. If you were to tell me that maybe 10 years ago, I would definitely not believe you because it wouldn't be happening. But now that, that it's happening, it's, 
I'm, I'm, I'm even running out of words because they, you're brave. You really are brave. I don't know if you, you did, I think you know, but I think today it's the day that you know, <laughs> as in nothing can stand on your way. Like pretty much nothing. If you want to own whatever, you can own it within a blink of an eye because I see that you honor your dreams. And I think that's very important. That's serving your purpose. You're serving your purpose on earth. And I think that's the most important thing and the most um, significant thing about living. You know, waking up, doing something that you love. And also, the emotion that you spoke of earlier that you're selling is happiness. Mm. You know, you, you're selling happiness to people. And if they can buy it, why not? I, I remember recently I saw, I've been seeing your Facebook um page around suitability gardens the Lazamari and 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 you hosted um natasha tahani's uh baby shower yes. you hosted uh david Talley not so long ago yes. you hosted um faith and Gettys wedding oh you've been busy <laughs> yeah we've, we've been quite busy i think um the, the the spaces that we operate in um i mean we design suits and Predominantly, our clients are wedding clients, mm. and we get to meet other people. I mean, we've met wedding planners, we've met deco people, and the venue also has allowed us to be exposed to the entire industry. Mm. So the venue has allowed us to cross-sell most of our products. So mm. we've used our suiting brand to actually sell the venue, you know. Mm. And we have gotten planners like, um, you know, no, no events. Um, and she's quite big as yeah, well. Yeah, quite big. Well, Mabotla, mm. um, Sunset Brides, The Collective, uh, they've actually put us on the map. And it is quite amazing how collaborations uh, can actually improve you as a person. Mm. So what we see today is just a result of all the hard work that the team, uh, suitability team, brings into place. And it's quite amazing what working together can do for you. Sure, yeah. amazing, beautiful. I remember also, I saw one of your posts where you spoke about um, having had David Lali as mm. one of the people who motivate you, um, especially in the many, you know, Stars. profession. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did it feel like to be hosting him in, in one of your own um, work workshops, I should say? So... So what happened with David Lade, um, I was, so our venue was hosting one of his friends. Mm. So we were not hosting an event of his, right? Mm. So it was one of his friends that it, it was high profile people actually on that mm. event. I didn't know until then, you know. You are um, a high profile people, <laughs> <laughs> are you aware? <laughs> so I, I even asked um, uh, Rose, um, who's part of our team and she manages bookings, right? Mm. Like, hey, man, why didn't you say that the people that are coming through today are like, because we always make sure that everyone who we interact with is high profile. Mm. Um, regardless of who, what, who or what you do, mm. it's, it's always important to treat your clients as high profile. Mm. Yeah. Which is, I think, why people love your place. Right. Mm. Mm. I mean, mm. I've been there before. I've, I was treated like royalty. Uh, so. <laughs> and it was when it started. It was, yeah. it was when, it, when it started because it was in 20, 2020. 20. Just yeah. after the first lockdown. But I still believe, I, I still don't believe it's the same place now because it's <laughs> like a three a, a three sixty turn. Yeah, you know, you gave it a three sixty yes. turn. It's yeah. it's beautiful. If anything, go online and check suitability garden. It's a very beautiful place for anything you have ever dreamt of. Your dream wedding, your dream baby shower, your dream anything pretty much. That place is super beautiful. How did you feel? Did you meet with Ooh, David Klein? Yeah, so meeting him. So what happened was, okay, we out there, we just doing finishing. Um, actually, what happened was it was raining, mm. right? So we're just trying to make sure that all the guests are comfortable. Mm. What we usually do after we're done with the setup, we just excuse ourselves, mm. right? Mm. And the client had actually booked last minute type of thing. Okay. You know, it was a spare of the moment event. <laughs> <laughs> then it was but a I mean, night during the week actually mm. it was on a sunday on a monday wow and okay cool they came through and then i see this guy in black being dropped off in in a mercedes mm. like you know i know this guy and then he just comes through 
Um, he walks in minding his own business, and everyone is just, you know, minding their own business mm-hmm. as well. Because it's high profile people. Yeah, it's high profile people. And I'm like, no, man, David Lyle is like, yeah, you know, I'm like, yo, I look up to you. I oh. like your work. I didn't say who I was, I didn't mm. even say um, I'm the owner of this place mm. or whatever. Mm. Just, you know, for me, it was just, I was just starstruck, you know, because he's one of the guys that. I've seen how he has grown a brand mm. um, of fashion, mm. you know, in a space where it was, I mean, he was what a pioneer fashion designer mm. within the African, um, what you call, context in mm. South Africa. So it was quite a big thing meeting him, uh-huh. you know. So I never said anything after that. I was just like, you know, I look up to you mm. and he's like... Yeah, you know, wow. and that was it. Wow. You know. Wow. But for you, what did it do for you? You know what it said to me? Mm. It killed the reason why I posted, I was very emotional to say, mm. damn. The one person I've looked up to for the longest time, I think from high school, mm. is at my place. I don't care if he knows it or not, but he he actually came here. Anyway, it doesn't matter if it's his event or not, but the person who invited him, it means the people of his caliber in his circles felt like it's cool to go to that place. I was humble. I think that was it. I think um, you know, what you're saying is very amazing because um, there's, there's a time in life where you wish to be like someone, you aspire to be like someone, and seeing them honoring you as much as he did, because he did honor you, um, indirectly so. And I, I believe that it was also by divine instruction for him to be there. You know, it was God saying to you, your dreams are valid, and I've been listening to you. It was the universe saying to you that your dreams are valid, and the time is now, you know. Um, goodness me. You've come so far. I think it's I respect you for the fact that you took a risk at one of the bad times for South Africa. That was when COVID started. You took a risk and I I think some way, somehow, I think you knew that this is going to work out. You had to give it your all. I think you knew, even if you didn't know how, but I think you knew that this is going to go big. It's going to be what it is today. Looking back from where you started and where you are, it hasn't been a long time. It's yesterday. It's just yesterday, really. How do you feel about this whole thing? You know, I think the, the main thing that I've grown to understand is that people somehow will support your dreams. Mm. It's crazy how people support the, 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 your dreams and you haven't even solely, I mean, solicited people to come, you guys come, come and support my dream. Mm. People that just come out you know, they see your passion. Mm. They see how much you burn when mm. you do what, how much you speak. So I'll, I'm just going to say something. Yes, on Friday, I flew out to Durban. Um, so we had Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? It's Sunday today, by the way. Yeah, Sunday today. Wow. Yeah. So on uh, Friday morning, um, a client... Uh, anonymous. Mm. They say, okay, I'm going to book flights for you to come. I need you to style um, my son for his wedding. Wow. Right? Good, yeah. And it's a very, very high profile client. Mm. I didn't know until I got there, you know. Mm. And one thing that got me going during that consultation, they mentioned something. They said, you know, the way you speak about those fabrics, you sound like you eat them. You live them. And I was like, yeah, yeah, technically, you see, I would you go to me, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, like, oh it was, it was quite, it was quite, firstly, I think I was humbled by two things. That mm-hmm. statement to say the way you speak about it, mm-hmm. um, the planner of that event had actually mentioned that it's going to be a very difficult, you're going to have a very difficult time convincing um, the people because they know what they want, oh. you know. So for for them to say, yo, the way you speak about those mm. fabrics and they 
they fell in love with the ideas and, and they like, fell in love with you doing the work you know yeah so showing giving giving what you do love because i think that's the significance of the whole thing you know doing something with love and giving it your all yeah. wow yeah. um sure i don't know i don't know what to say but <clears throat> i feel like there's a time and there's a point in life where you know that now this is my lifetime commitment um you're a husband um you you're an inspiration to many um what would you say to a young south african who wants to be like you or who has a dream that they haven't even realized because sometimes we find it a bit hard to realize our dreams because of the voices that we spoke of earlier because of the circumstances we may find ourselves in um what what would you say to a young south african black oh my god yeah. you're amazing you're black i mean what would you say to a a young black south african or a, a young black african out there to say push what would you say to them because i think someone said something to you one day even yourself you know this this inner voice that talks to you you know so uh, um, i i don't like being i mean being a motivational speaker but i like using my experience mm. in actually trying to show people how possible things are wow. so i'm going to tell you about random people mm. like uh, petrus mutsipe one might say he came from a well off family but it doesn't matter he's managed to turn wealth and to keep up and keep up mm. you know for years there's Tommy Elmen who a Nigerian guy there's all those guys who have made it okay. there's one thing that i've actually realized a, a trend when you know what you want and you believe in what you want mm. right and you believe in no restrictions mm. the moment you start restricting god as to what they can do for you then you start having problems mm. and you dream i i dream in 40 you know i don't if i tell you of my dreams you think i'm ridiculous today mm. you know even if i don't get to see them happen but the art of dreaming is very important yeah. so whatever you think of if your mind one person once said if your mind cannot conceive it you you can achieve it mm. so the reason why our minds can conceive something or uh, think of something is because we've seen it before mm. you know and i think it also lies in the heart because True. i believe that everything beautiful emanates from the inside and we believe that it's in the heart yeah. because they live in our heart and they manifest in our minds yeah. as well wow. mm. it's, it's beautiful it's beautiful By the way, we're in Santin. <laughs> we're in Santin. Um, why did you choose Santin for suitability? Okay, so Santin for suitability was really, um, I mean, it looks in the Soweto. Everyone would say yes, yeah, Santin. I remember my 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 uncle used to work in in Santin, and mm-hmm. yeah, we used to like. It was be, a big deal. It was a big. Big deal. Well, let me remind you. Yeah. Santin is still a big deal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's waterfall by the way. Yeah, it it is a big deal. I think um it's a business district whereby people who have a good taste in fashion, you know, mm-hmm. good taste in just the nice things. They mm-hmm. they you know, this is the place where they come to. Mm-hmm. So, I think for me it was a very it was a business deal. and as a, a business decision rather and also it was um that you know like you know i really want to call my office an office in santa mm. so i'll give you an example i started working for this for for the fast rank group right mm. and it's just three minutes walk from here mm. you know so when i get out of here i'm like yes sir. you know i used to work <laughs> in the building over there right now we've got our own establishment it's not far from there for me it's like it's it's just sentimental wow. it's yeah wow i think if anything you you should appreciate the fact that you're a living testimony and you are your ancestors 
wildest dream. Goodness me. I think everybody should be proud of you. But above everything, you should be proud of yourself. And take credit, man. Take credit. You deserve it. Because you have achieved. Like literally, oh, achieving. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <sighs> Goodness me. Um, this show is called Changing the Narrative. Yeah. Because, you know, there's this stigma that's going around, especially um, about black people, yeah. that we want to be spoon-fed, we want things get given on a silver platter, we don't want to do for ourselves. But you change the narrative. A job that's going to give me 30000 for the next five years, maybe I'm going to be earning 80000 and decided I can make thirty k in a day. You know, you change the narrative. How does it, like, like what's the significance? Thing about your journey to this day because you literally did that. You changed the narrative of your life, of how we are viewed as black people, especially in terms of expecting things to be done for us. Yeah. So I think in my space there are a few things that I, 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 I always fight to, to, to break, stereotypes. Mm. The first one is that black people are not professional, mm. right? And to be quite frank and honest, we actually still experience black businesses that do not give the best, um, the, what you call, service, mm. right? We are trying to break that. And as black businesses, we are way, I mean, we're very capable mm. to give people the best mm. money can buy, mm. you know? So there's that one thing. We need to break those stereotypes. Mm. And the stereotype that black people want to be fed, you know, mm. You know, every time when people walk in here, they talk to myself or even go to our venue and they find me and they say, okay, who's the, can, can we meet the owner of the establishment? Mm. Like, hey, baba, hey, baba. Mm. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. But the point is, it's very important if you see us, uh, when we were growing up, we would see gangsters mm. coming in Egasi and driving the big cars and you look us looking up to them to say, okay, this is what we want to become, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, us now creating this new template, mm -hmm. is that there are a lot of things, man. Mm -hmm. Like the first thing is, I studied actuarial science. People expect me to live a life. I have to go to work, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You have to break your stereo that stereotype to say, okay, cool. Even if you've studied actuarial science, if your calling is this, why should you be? I mean, mm. we are called a uh, mm. <laughs> But you're not a tailor, you're a tailor. Hey? That's a That's a <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. My yeah. goodness. Um, yeah. This is very beautiful. I think, if anything, you know, you, you are in the same level. I'm not talking about financially, but I think we've seen um, how Abu Theo Baloi have believed in their dream, have sustained their dream, and have actually got to live their dream while doing other things. You yeah. know, it didn't stop them either way. And you you didn't let anything stand on your way. You didn't let any voice actually stop you. You literally said, I have wings. And you literally had wings. You know, you literally said that not even the sky is the limit. Yeah. And not even the sky was the limit, you know. You went above the sky to do everything that you did. And for that, I commend you. I respect you. You have managed to change the narrative that we are fighting each and every day as young black people. You know, you have managed to change people's minds about the stereotypes that we have. I mean, if you are at the level of hosting high profile people and having high profile people sponsor you with t tickets and say, come to Durban, I need you for this, then you must know that you are a big deal. And like we said earlier, I'm actually glad that I managed to get you now yeah. because I think it's going to be very expensive to get to talk to you at a later stage. Mm -hmm. And for that, good luck because you have a very beautiful journey ahead of you. Thank I you. hope you are ready. I hope you are emotionally and spiritually ready for such because you're on the plane now. Um, it's literally flying. It's taking off. And where you're going, to, it's a very beautiful destination. And for that, good luck. Thank you so much. So... On closing, because I think we've covered almost everything I wanted to cover. Um, there's so much that's happening currently in South Africa. Yeah. You know, there's so much 
that's happening around the world? You know, what keeps you going? I think there is a need in me to consistently break barriers, mm -hmm. right? There are a lot of barriers that we face as humans, mm -hmm. right? There are a lot of problems that we, we face. For me, the drive is to always create something new that will change people's lives, mm -hmm. right? Experiences that people never knew they needed. Mm -hmm. So for me, that keeps me going. I think it's a drive that continues to ensure that I wake up every day, want to come up with new stuff. Mm -hmm. Always, there's, you know, for me, it always means a lot to every six months, I come up with something new, something mm -hmm. that will blow people's minds. Mm -hmm. And like you, you've actually mentioned something about uh, Theo Baloy, and I've seen their journey, mm -hmm. how he's, he's done it's, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's beautiful. You see, that type of journey is a journey whereby people will be like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And the more people do it, right, he's opened an entire can of worms, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there is, sure. the, the industry is growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be shocked if five years from now, South Africa will still be importing sneakers from other brands. Yo, that's amazing. It's huge. To even say about a fellow brother. It's huge. It shows that, you know, there's black love, you know? Okay. After all, there, there, there is black love. <laughs> They're opening something that we are all going to enjoy, so I'm mm, happy. It's mm. exciting. We and all must be excited. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Um, thank you so much for, for allowing us time to, to 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 get into this plane with you because it was a very um nice flight above everything um changing the narrative is a show that is designed for young black people you know it is designed to to restore to regenerate the dignity of young and black most most importantly we are advocating for black so um, I think you're a great and a perfect example for that. And at this moment, I want to say to you, perhaps in a few years' time, that's where you feel like you're going to be a legend. But I want to say to you now, you are a living legend. You have changed the narrative, and you have shown that against all odds, you will do it, you will make it, by just believing in yourself, by just believing in the beauty of your dream. And most importantly, by working your ass off to see your dreams coming true. For that, I would like to say to you, we honor you as changing the narrative, as a living legend. One day, 100 years from now, when your grandson is, or your great-grandson is watching this video, wherever, on whatever platform, they will know that my great-great-great-grandparent was my great-grandfather, actually, mm. was a living legend. And today, on this day, I want to say you are a living legend. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on um, moving, you know. Keep on giving what you do your best. Thank you so much for joining us on Changing the Narrative. Thank you so much for giving us your time. And thank you so much for being great. You're doing great. You're being great. If there's anything that you would like to say about your business, because this is the moment that we are changing the, the narrative. You've got the show, you've got the platform. Please do so. Wow, thank you. All right. <laughs> wow. Okay, um, I think for me, I really appreciate this opportunity. I think it is something huge. What it has done it has rejuvenated my spirit. It has taught me, it has reminded me. Um, I hear people tell me those things, you know, mm -hmm. unofficially, of course, but having someone come in to sit me down and tell me that, mm -mm, you, you're playing around, you are a big deal, mm -hmm. you know. For me, I'm, I'm very humble, you know, and you I are. don't like, uh, you, you know, are. the limelight or anything like that. But for me, it is actually teaching me to say, okay, um, look at this, right? It's very important, mm -hmm. you know. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you about the story about suitability. Suitability is a group, right, of brands that produces class, right? And class is unnecessary.
When you talk unnecessary, you talk things that you can live without. It's like mm-hmm. luxury, you know. Mm-hmm. Luxury. It's, it's, it's about the, the finer things in life, you know. Like, let's talk about fabrics. Let's talk about events, you mm-hmm. know. So I can be whatever you want me to be in this space. My team and I are always ready to pull the best off as far as the best garments South Africa has to, um, to produce. If we don't have it in South Africa, do not worry. If it's a cloth that we do not host in South Africa, we wouldn't mind shipping it in. Wow. Play on it. Handcraft whatever we need to get you happy. You should look at yourself right now. You're selling your, your business with passion. <laughs> Uh, that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I really love talking about my business. <laughs> if I were to talk about my business, it would take mm. me the whole freaking day. Mm. But I think, honestly speaking, what we are trying to achieve here is to create a path for other fellow designers, for other fellow pl- um, events, um, I mean, events uh, coordinators and mm. venues and the like. I mean, there are not so many black owned event, uh, event venues and when you get to some event venues, you find out that, ah, man, they do not allow this type of thing. Mm. You can't come in and slaughter your goat because, mm. you know. <laughs> come through, bring your goats. We've got permits to slaughter Let goats. Let him him boozy. Let him happy, you know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's pretty much it was it. very beautiful. Um, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. Um, I think I thought about something a moment, a moment ago, actually. Mm. Um, you know, We've got this big clothing brand. I think it's what I see suitability as. You know, I see suitability being a Gucci of our time, a, a Fabiani of our time. Oh, the blessing. You know, um, I see it going overseas. I see it on an international plane because now I think you know that you're no longer competing with us here. Hey, you are competing internationally because if anything, that's where you are headed. So for that. Good luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on Changing the Narrative today. And thank you so much, um, our QA. It was lovely uh, having you uh, today on our um, show. Thank you so, so much. I wish I wish you nothing but the best. I appreciate this. Thank you. Can I say something before we leave? Yes, please. Yeah, this is an interview, <laughs> and it's been running. Shasi. <laughs> When I do my own videos, I take take about fifteen takes. It's crazy. Wow. 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 So this is awesome. It's yeah. I, I really appreciate your craft. You know. Thank I you would... so much. Should I tell you my secret? I don't. Um, I don't revise this. Okay. I don't have a script. Wow. I pray before I get here, and um, it's it's just the Holy Spirit, nice. you know, going through me. And I believe that everything. If I do everything spiritually, it turns out to be. As beautiful as this moment is. May God bless your 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 endeavors. I mean, you you are doing amazing stuff. Thank and you so sitting much. Sitting here, you haven't only managed to get a story out of me. You've actually rejuvenated my spirit. Thank and you. yeah, beautiful things coming. You know, <laughs> Omeg G, you'll mm. be running parallel to Omeg G, and mm. then hopefully mm. everything. This entire business of Getting stories will be documented and will be something huge. I receive. In sort of I receive. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. It's appreciate been you. really lovely having this um, interview with you. Thank I you. really appreciate it. And good luck with everything. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you so much. Cheers.